What is going on guys, Zaraba here and welcome to a brand new video today about F1 2015 and the German preview event article has dropped on the F1game.de website and this is going to be awesome. We're going to be reading through the entire article, I've uh, Bing translated the entire article and I've got it here in front of me, I'm going to be reading it through and analysing it as we go, all live comms, so let's go through this article. This is obviously from the preview event that they went on to uh, June 9th and this is their article now, the embargo has finally been lifted. Let's hopefully get some more info on F1 2015. Okay, so guys, I've got the article right in front of me on my screen. I'm just going to be kind of skimming through and reading it all live comm and kind of just giving my thoughts and analysing what we can see from this article right here. So this is from Robert of the F1game.de. So, uh, you know, obviously, thank you to him. Link in the description to the article. You can go check it out. It's in German, though. So if you're not German, you're going to have to translate it. But I know there's plenty of you guys who do watch my videos who are German. So maybe if I get something wrong in the translation, you can help me along and uh, correct me. But here we go. We're starting with the article. So before we allowed four consoles, uh, steering wheels and game pads in this preview event and it was run on a PlayStation 4. So uh, the preview event, it's on PS4. So obviously they were aiming for 1080p 60fps on the PS4 um, and Xbox One. But it's been known that in a lot of different games that the Xbox sometimes struggles and has to be like 900p and 60fps. Uh, so uh, that they did it on the the more powerful console just to kind of showcase the game a little bit more uh they're just saying some stuff about you know the fact that we knew before that there were going to be rules from 2015 with further updates throughout the year that we not might not get the full 2015 grid straight away and then the 2014 season would basically be like a little gimmick like a dlc which uh, i also agree with it does seem like a little bit of just a oh here you go here's some more cars but now we get into the actual meat of it so he said uh there's also commentators in our preview build there was english commentators and effectively there would be commentary before and after the race sequences and they says that it's going to be a view of a tabular grid so that's quite promising a tabular grid so that kind of sparks kind of um thoughts of how they do it on motor on the moto gp game where they have like the actual grid and like they do in the fia or fom feed where you have like the kind of grid of drivers so it kind of you know looks like they're going to go for a more authentic feel in that way and telling you the entire grid instead of just looking at your monitor in garage to see the grid you're going to be shown it in the kind of cutscene before the race and then he says that there's just different kind of audio tracks for what's going to be ahead for the race and over the results there's also stuff uh going on with the qualification as well there's different audio so he puts an example saying a good result for Jensen Button who qualified 10th or something like that so you know obviously in the past we've got nothing like that you know we'd literally just see the results of qualifying and the race and then your, your engineer would either say great job you did well or amazing job you got pole but this time they're actually going to you know remark on other drivers and how they've done so hopefully that'll be quite randomized and we won't be hearing the same exact sort of phrasing every single time. So the next part says they were restricted to Monaco and Spa to race in this preview build. So finally, that's quite good to see they've raced other tracks apart from Singapore in the wet like the other preview events were. Uh, they also got restricted on drivers they could drive. So Nico Rosberg in the Mercedes and Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari were available for them that day. And Robert's trying to stress in this article at the moment that this is a preview build and it was specifically made for this preview event because if they tried to choose any other track, it would, eventually, it would have effectively just crashed the game out because the game was just the bare bones. Looks like they only built in these two two tracks and you know that you could choose these two drives only for this preview event. So he's trying to stress that maybe everything's not going to be the exact same on release. He said the menu is completely different, known to his predecessors, with great images, great menus scrolling from left and right. So that's quite good to see that the menu's changed up because I've got quite bored of F1-14's menu style which has pretty much been the same since F1 2012 so uh, good to see their menus changing so the main displays are equal to quick race the champions uh, the championship mode I'm guessing because there's no champions mode uh, is the championship mode so I'm guessing he means the single player uh, season and then the settings are available and the focus here is there's no race car um, in the actual perspective of the menu so there's no kind of just like like there is on f1 2014 13 and 12 you always got that menu where like there's the mclaren right in the middle of the menu and then the menus kind of revolve around the car he says that's completely gone now it's a lot more uh, kind of just a different kind of thing from what we've seen 
So when he shows quick race, he goes into the further, the next menu, obviously, for the quick race. And he says, then we see the drivers all animated as part of the game. So when you're choosing the drivers, when you go to each driver, it looks like they're going to be animated in terms of like we've seen with FOM now they've done on the grid starts. When the race starts, you see the driver sort of like Sky Sports does with football. The driver kind of, you know, puts his head up and then kind of just crosses his arm or something like that. So that'll be quite cool to see if they've done the full kind of crossing arms, kind of putting the head up stuff. Or it might just be, you know, just showing up out of the out of the fading and he actually details this choosing one of them they move their head forward and then of course the digital egos of each driver do that so all the faces are really very faithfully reproduced so that's pretty good he does a remark when he chose Roman Grosjean. He had to chuckle slightly. The appearance reminded me of, of Boris Becker at an early age. Okay, so obviously, obviously, Co-Masters, it's a racing game. It's not meant to be like realistic, like completely to real life faces. They did actually do facial scans at the uh, what was it the Hungarian Grand Prix last year? They remarked they're doing facial scans for people like Carlos Sainz Jr. So uh, definitely, they're going to try their best. But he does remark that he chuckled at Roman Grosjean's one. And then he moves forward going, so he enters the race, the, ra the race is loaded up, the commentator welcomes him to the grid, and the t you get the tabular grid just showing you off the kind of grid and all the drivers' faces next to him. So it's properly like what, if you've played MotoGP guys or, see or seen the MotoGP game, it's like that, like where they show you the grid and you have all the little kind of headshots of the drivers and then the names next, up, next side by side. So you get a more kind of actual immersion of your, you know, watching a race Grand Prix going on. Okay, so this next part is about choosing the setup menu and the tyres and whatnot. So now he says it's very going to be very familiar to us Formula 1 players in terms of how you change the tyres and change the setup. That was also a remark before in previous stuff I've said in videos where it looks like the setup menu is not actually going to change aesthetically but it will, uh, as in the, the menu will do the same sort of things but it might look a little bit different. But he then says, this is quite cool, you're sitting in the garage in the pit lane and he says the driver waves his arm to his engineer in the middle of the pit and then you get a tablet in your arm. So much like we've seen in real life F1 where drivers in the middle of free practice they kind of talk to the engineers they kind of the engineer leans in and tells them stuff so in this sense he's giving you a tablet with the information then you choose your setup and do choose the settings what you want so he says it seems so complex so uh, that's quite a good thing to see if it's uh, seeming quite complex to kind of you know the actual animations are going to be a lot more high high fidelity than we've seen before and then this is a big one this is a big one look at this he says we no longer have to watch the live timing you can actually ride on board with drivers during a session and this will also be the same for online multiplayer so finally you never have to retire now in an online multiplayer session to actually see other drivers this could be big for things like AOR where you could have a, maybe like an extra person in the lobby if it's not a full man 16 lobby you could have a 16th person just there as like a director and they could watch every single driver on board as it going as it's going live and during career mode and whatnot you can actually watch how people are going you can see how you know, if you're in, you know, let's say Jensen Button's car, you can see how Vettel's going on his on his flying lap. You can see the Mercedes are absolutely murking it. You can maybe try and even look and spy and see maybe what the AI are doing, where they're gaining time and whatnot, because you can look on board with them and not just the live timing screen. So that is absolutely major. I personally think that's a huge deal, and I think I think that's got a lot of potential for AOR league racing. The next part is he says there's no manual driving out in the start lineup. Standing up on his car is uh, the starting position, and the team is assembled to the car. So essentially, it just it's the same thing. It kind of fades to black, and then I'm guessing it kind of uh, fades in with the animation of your car on the grid. So there's no sort of uh, warm up lap like we've already confirmed a few months ago anyway. He then says on the grid you can change the setup of the tactics again. So in case you, ch if you change your mind, let's say, you know, so from qualifying to the race, if you want to change your like your actual, if you if you didn't set a lap, you could change it. If you turned off Park Ferme, you could change it again. And it's all possibilities of doing it on the grid as well, not just back in the garage. So now here we go. Coincidentally, he remarks the exact same thing I just said. He said during the qualification at Monaco, Nasser went on his clean. Uh, he went uh, with his clean lap and a few several f seconds ahead of him, and he wanted to check out where he was gaining time and what he was doing. He wanted to know what tyres he went on. It looks like he went onto the soft tyres instead of the harder tyres. He was. It just you know. It just shows that you can kind of look at what they're doing tactically. All the drivers in your career mode. So if you're if you're you know trying to get pole position, you can see what your rivals are doing. Are they going on the softs? Are they going on the hards? Are people going to be, you know, saving a set of soft tires for the race? So it's all getting a bit more tactical in terms of the way you can look about everything.
Moving on to now AI, he says that AI did have some problems and he would like to directly respond to them. So, you know, I'm sort of used to AI having a bit of a stupid kind of mind. So let's see what he says. He says uh, in Spa, he drove away from starting in first place in Nico Rosberg's Mercedes. Um, and it looks like maybe it, it, someone crashed behind him. Kimi Raikkonen drove into Hamilton. Okay, so the AI are now making mistakes and crashing into each other, maybe. Or I don't know if it might have been a bug on the preview event or something. But, you know, AI crashing into one another, it's not a totally bad thing it gives a bit more kind of variety in it but he says in the second of three rounds the drs have been released hamilton goes up a rouge and got very close to him on the straights and he had to fend very aggressively into i'm guessing the end of the camel straight um and then he said in the last round he fell back he fell back to several seconds perhaps he had problems with his tires or had to fuel save so that you know, it's quite good to see that he had to defend aggressively to defend with Hamilton, but then it's sort of the standard F1 kind of thing we've come to expect from Cody's with the AI dropping back sometimes, where they don't really put much of a fight, but perhaps, you know, they've said in the previous uh, kind of press releases that the tyre wear and the saving, uh, fuel saving is a lot more apparent, so maybe finally the AI will have issues with fuel saving and tyre wear, because on F1 2014 they frankly don't have any, they can just go on as long as they want on their tyres it doesn't seem like they have to save any fuel whatsoever so if this is a sign that maybe the ai finally have to actually do stuff like the player does so that's quite good to see but if it's just the standard sort of ai slows down and backs off then you're gonna have to watch out for it so this is we're gonna have to be very little skeptical about how this works out but we'll see obviously once again as i've said and as robert said in this article it is a preview event code that was specifically made for the preview event so it's very much a bare bone for the event